Okay, right, so I started into this turtle deck. I uh, went ahead and laid it on there and marked where to relieve it. They want to say add an extra eighth inch around. Um, I am still thinking about doing this out of carbon, so I'm not going to completely, uh, you know, do the side wings and everything on this. But I'm going to get it pretty much fit to shape. So if I do the carbon, uh, I just be able to cut it and to match it, and then it would be uh, good to go. So that being said, is there's not a whole lot to it. So you cut that relief. We're up tight against the support there. I have to go on the other side and line it up. Then come down here. We're going to peel this back so we can see through to the uh, cam lock receivers, which are down in there, which I'd already done. I'd done that prior to the covering process. So all I have to do is put a hole through that, put the cam lock in. The ones on the side, they're here, here, and then two down here. Those I'll need to go ahead and drill from the backside out to get the hole location and then put the cam locks in, drill them out and everything. So there's that process there. But that portion I don't want to do until I make a carbon version of this just so it doesn't mess up the mold. Now we're going to come down. I'm not sure right about where, but we're going to put a hinge in here so that this back part folds up so we can get into the baggage compartment. And uh, I'll do the same thing on the carbon version. I thought about even putting a strut on it and attaching it down in the fuselage so when you undo it, it pops up and stays up, or at least a rod that you can hook it in place because that's one of the things I noticed with that feature on the Model 5 is you flip it up, the wing grabs it, and it slams it back down. So uh, it'd be nice to have some way to secure it in the open position so you can get in and out without having to hold it. So anyway, just getting started on this turtle deck. Uh, the goal is to have this cut the shape, then ready to go on the table to be laid up with carbon. And what I'm doing there is I took one of those seat pan covers that I'm replacing with the carbon is the same stuff, the same uh, eighth inch Lexan. Took one of those and I put PVA down, waxed it, PVA down. Again, I'm letting that dry right now and I'm gonna do a very small layup of carbon on top of that, let it dry overnight and then see if it affected the Lexan at all because I don't wanna do the layup on top of the protective coating because there's areas in here that are, have gotten torn up. Hopefully that didn't damage the Lexan underneath in those areas. But if I peel this all off, it's a nice smooth finish um, and I'm going to do the way up on the inside so the final product of the carbon will be gloss if I do it right. So that's why the test piece, I want to make sure that the epoxy resin with the heat it gets to and the chemicals and everything that one, it will release and two, it doesn't damage the finish on the Lexan before I do that. So that's why the test piece. If it does any sort of discoloration to the test piece, then I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. And so I got the vacuum pump out that I bought a long time ago to do some of this carbon fiber work. I'm doing that test piece on the Lexan. Just took some scrap carbon fiber cloth that I had laying around, laid it up on there and uh, put down the peel ply, got some more batting and then set up the uh, vacuum system here. Just taped it down to the table and running the vacuum. You can see it working really well. It's pulling the excess resin through into the batting. All right, let's take a look at the progress here on the turtle deck. This has actually been a much nicer uh, piece to work with. There's not a whole lot to do as far as trimming other than up around the carry through or uh, pass through spar. So uh, basically what I did was peel back the covering and it's clear so you can line up real good with where the cam lock backing plates were. Drilled a hole down through there, widened it up, had to do a little filed notch to get the um, fastener through there. Uh, and that's because there's, a, there's pins on either side of the screw and they won't pass through the quarter inch opening. So you just file a little opening, drop it in through there and then they won't fall out as easy. The next, made sure it was lined up with the top and then back drilled or put the drill through and drilled to mark these holes here and here. Now, and something I always wanted to do on my Model 5, which I never got around to doing it, is get these cam locks on the back to be wingnut style. 
So I've got two off of my off of an RV6 um, just from spares. But I'll order up some more of these and ideally they line up when they're latched so that the fin is in line with the aircraft. Then you don't need a tool to get into the baggage. You just pop those three, you're gonna pull it up. It's gonna hinge about here and it will hinge all the way up. All right guys, real quick, the uh, test piece on the Lexan that I did last night, um, it did scar the Lexan a little bit. And so I've decided not to do the carbon fiber cowling or uh, turtle deck at this time. Um, it's something I'll probably bend a piece of aluminum to match this shape, which isn't too hard. You just need a width on the bottom, width on the top, and then just do a, a bend. So that's something I'll probably do in the future. But um, for right now, I think it's time to go ahead and, and get this one fully installed and move on with getting the plane done. We can do those little um, projects later at a later date. Um, when we get this thing out of the garage, have more room to focus on those small improvements later. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use this turtle deck for now. All right, so pushing uh, everything out of the shop. I'm gonna mount the wings on. I got the uh, Stole Rat Red Bluff crew coming up to help me out. Uh, we're gonna get the wings on. I'm doing that so that I can put the flapper on, holes through the turtle deck, and decide where to split that for the hinge. All right, so I had the uh, Stole Rats Red Bluff crew come out and help me mount the wings so that we can finish up this turtle deck by uh, marking the flapper on entry through the turtle deck. <clears throat> In order to do that, I need to mount the uh, flapper on brackets. They're all drilled, I just have to rivet them. Then we'll hang the flapper on, mark where it goes through the turtle deck, get that cut. Then I'm gonna pull the turtle deck off, fold the wings and leave them on for right now. Go ahead and walk around the plane. It's the first time it's really been put together this much. You know, other than having the windshield, most of it's there, windshield and doors. All right guys, here's a kind of a neat method of finding where your hole goes through your turtle deck. I've got two extra flapper on uh, hanging hangers. Uh, my friend Rich Kimball at Snake River Bush Plane uh, sent me those in the mail so I could do it this way. And just use a broom handle through those, it's like almost perfect size. And where that comes in and touches the turtle deck, that's where we're gonna drill our hole. And then we're gonna split the turtle deck into two pieces all the way across through that hole and put the uh, hinge in and that's uh, where that hinge will be located. We'll flip it up <clears throat> from there. So uh, I'm gonna mark that one, then I'll put these on the other side and do the other one, then pull it off, drill those holes, and then we'll test fit it. All right, so working on this hinge. So I marked the lines I wanna cut. So here's where the flapper on pass-through is. So we're gonna come up from there 
And then we're also going to come from the forward edge of that circle down to separate the side pieces. The reason you want to do the forward side is so that you can lift the, the forward piece out past the flapper on tube. If you cut it on the back side, it would be, it would be locked in and caught there. So you'd have to cut a channel. So you're better off cutting that and then it will slide up and out of the fuselage. Okay, on the instructions, I'm glad I read them, is you want to, oh, this frog's going crazy over here. You want to uh, mark 3 16 on either side of the center line. And that's because you can see this groove. That's how far apart the two pieces are going to be once you're done and put them back together. So if you don't take out that extra material, then it's going to push, it's going to mess up your alignment with your holes that are already drilled. It's going to push this piece that distance away from the other piece and then you'll have a huge gap on your, on your lines that you cut here. So we're going to come up to the center of that and then we're going to do two cuts. You better just do one and then sand it back, but we'll probably do two cuts on that to get the uh, cut right. And then we'll put the hinge in, cut it to length. And then we've got all this hardware to go in there. So this is the kit provided by Kit Fox. Um, all this is is a uh, shower hinge. And if we're putting two pieces of glass together, you know, probably seen them in, in those types of showers. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That and, and then the stainless hardware. Uh, it doesn't call for any sealant to go in here to put the two pieces together. It's got these three sets of, of angled grooves that grab the turtle deck once you shove it in there. And uh, supposedly that's enough to keep it waterproof. All right, so I'm getting into drilling the hardware for this hinge on the turtle deck. And this is the hardware that's provided. It's a Allen head, but it's got this, uh, I don't know what they call this type of head on a screw, but it sticks up about an eighth of an inch. So I've got these other ones, it's a slightly larger screw, but it's more of a flush or cone. Again, I think it's a button head, I don't know what they call them. But the reason I'm gonna use this one over this one is because when you fold the hinge all the way back, this part is gonna lay right up on top of the other part. And so if you have something sticking up, it's gonna push down into that hinge and that could potentially cause a problem. So that's why I'm swapping out that hardware. So instead of using the one that sticks up, I'm using a, a flatter profile uh, one size bigger, I think they're 8 30 seconds instead of 6 30 seconds. And uh, I'll go ahead and put those in, and then I have to match drill the aluminum support that goes underneath on the inside. And what we're going to do there is we're going to face the angle, if that's the front of the plane, we're going to face the angle so when you look back at the turtle deck, you'll see this and not the screws. All right guys, so I made one more adjustment on the hardware that's provided for the hinge. Um, they provide this Allen head, kind of a sticks up quite a bit, so I showed that I went to the, the more flush sitting head on an 832nd, 5 eighths long um, screw. But on the front half of the hinge, you have a piece of aluminum that goes in there um, as a support. Um, and so that extends the length of the, of the screw you need. So I had some 5 eighths that I used on the part that, of the hinge that doesn't use the support. And then I used 3 quarter inch long ones, which obviously are longer. Um, and they give the proper distance so that when you put the nut on, you have two threads extending out from the nut. Um, different screws from the back half of the hinge to the front half of the hinge, front being the, uh, the short piece, I used the longer screws.
All right, here's the turtle deck, just about complete. I gotta put the strakes on the side, which need to be painted, so I haven't done those yet. See how it folds up. Good access to the baggage compartment. I like this hinge, it came out pretty good. Um, the only thing I would do differently is I would angle this cut a little bit farther forward because it's hard to get it up past the, uh, the flapper on tube. I'm gonna have to round the bottom of this cut just a little bit to get it to clear, to get the uh, cover or get the whole thing on and off, which you need to do in order to fold the wings. So we've got the uh, glare shield in, windshield's done, just needs to be mounted. Turtle deck is done, making some good progress this week. All right guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end. And for those of you that were patient enough to get to the end of this video, I've got a little contest for you. Uh, we did get a chance to weigh the airplane. And then I took all the stuff that's not currently on the airplane, like the windshield, doors, aluminum fairings, wingtips, flapperons, muffler prop, um, jury struts, stuff like that. I weighed them all individually, added those to the weight we got from weighing the airplane. And I now have an accurate empty weight I do have to weigh it all again once all that stuff's on because I need to get the proper distribution of that weight to get the CG information I need. So, but I do have a total empty weight number. So give me your best guess to the 10th, so 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 or, or whatever point, that's not saying it's a 0.5 or 6, just point whatever, because I want, don't want to have a bunch of people guessing the same number. We want to get it down to the 10th. First person to answer correctly or the closest guess after one week, I will send you a hat and t-shirt from Behringer. So when you leave your guess, leave some way for me to contact you um, and I'll get a hold of you of the winner and then we'll get into that on the next video and we're gonna talk about the weight on the airplane. So stay tuned for that one and give me your best guess.